Oh, I love the thing to tell me we're recording. All right. So uh, welcome, everyone, to the uh, 60th Auto Hockey webinar. Um, I was just telling Jackie, that's five years of you know doing one a month. That's a long time. And uh, welcome, everyone. Um, if you're new here, you know, we, uh, Jackie and I, I, I I'm in uh, Dallas, well, outside of Dallas now, Texas. And Jackie, you're over in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, just outside Copenhagen, so. Yeah, been yeah, quite a few uh, years now, Joe. Uh, I actually think we yeah, did have a yeah. few um, pauses or a month we skipped, at, at least in the beginning. I think, so, too, I, well, from my memory, we missed two um, that we we actually said we're going to skip it. I, last year, I remember there was one month where we said, let's just take a break. And then I think there was one other time where it, there were just a lot going on and we, and we you know, said, fine, we'll skip it. But um, anyway, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been it's been going for quite a while. Um, so, oh, uh, oh, thanks, Robert. Um, Ian, let me. Uh, so here's how to get in touch with us if you want. Um, so there we had 106 registrants. Well, most people, you know, they they watch the the review later uh, on YouTube, uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but just so we don't all talk over each other, you start off muted. Um, that's the only reason why um, if you have a question you can use the chat like most of you know um, and we're one of us that's usually monitoring it or um, ask to mute yourself now actually i i saw a new setting so now um just do like matthew did say can you know can i unmute and then i'll jackie or i will um, um allow you to unmute yourself i guess the right way to say it but yeah it's uh just it's really just so we don't all talk over each other because in i'm sure a lot of you have seen too we'll be on a call and someone invariably unmutes themselves and then they forget that and someone walks in and they have a conversation and it's just really distracting. So this is the easy way. Uh, so we had a couple of announcements. Let me copy all of this. So it's not so new anymore, but we have a new format for our podcast, but they're actually on a podcast platform now. Um, this, uh, you know, why are macros popular more? I think that one was actually in the last last month's webinar. I thought I included in here. Um, why won't people pay for automation code? Now, this last one was one that I thought was really interesting. Um, was was you know how to hire the right automator and minimize risk. This isn't talked about a lot in a lot of places, and it really should be right. When we see people, especially on like either Facebook or the Auto Hockey Forum or Reddit or wherever, they ask people for help. And, and A, they ask, the, some of them will even say, I'd like to pay someone for help, which is always a great thing. Um, even if you don't, if you're just volunteering, you know, I'd like some help, great. Well, you don't always wanna take, you know, anybody that answers the call, right? You, you wanna kinda make sure they have a clue what they're doing probably. Um, and then secondly though, more importantly, if you're giving them access to any sort of your accounts or anything like that, like there's some things you can do to help safeguard it. And so that's what Jackie and I discussed in that, that podcast. I thought it was a pretty good um, informative way to, to help understand what to, what to share, when to share it, you know, when not to share things and how to also make sure that the person you're talking to has a clue what they're doing. Yeah. How we also talked about sandboxes and pseudocode yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, sandboxes. That's not the thing I got next to my tool. But um, anyway, um, all right. So let's go on. So uh, just today, actually, I don't think I've shared the video yet, but um, it's out. It's live. There, um, we released our, our fiddler everywhere. I should uh, emphasize this everywhere ripper. Uh, and so, actually, let me paste all of these into the chat so they're all there. So. As you may know, like we've done, we've done, a, uh, actually, Jackie is one of my, I thought our favorite, yeah, well, well, it's my favorite, one of our best webinars was on APIs and just understanding APIs and how they're different than, different and similar to web scraping, depending on what you're doing and how you can often do a lot of the same stuff with an API call, you know, than you can with uh, web scraping. Um, especially now with IE kind of dying out, it's it's becoming more and more prudent as a good solution is to instead of doing browser automation to just do the API calls just as if a browser was doing it, right? And so you can replicate a lot of the traffic. Um, let me de quickly demonstrate here. Um, let me fire up. So Fiddler Everywhere. Now the thing I don't, Fiddler Everywhere is the new version of Fiddler from 
Tella something. What what's the name of the company? All right, I go. Yeah. Yeah. But uh it, the thing I don't like about it is it's a it's an online version, right? It's it's kind of software and cloud. It's in front from a Chrome browser, uh, or the, the the skin of it is. Um, but it, it's monitoring your network traffic, right? So you can see your your especially your browser traffic, but other traffic that's happening in your computer. Um, and now let's say let's say I open up Chrome and I go to the automator. Now we're going to come back to Fiddler everywhere. And here, so here was an automator. Uh, there was a 200, 200 you know, 403. Here we go. Here's the one that's probably the main page. Now, let me turn off the capturing so it doesn't go crazy. So back up in here, right? Um, the first thing you do, actually, in, in Fiddler everywhere, it's just a quick tutorial. You can hit the letter E, and that will bring you into the composer view of it. So if I wanted to recreate this, if I actually come back over here and get rid of everything and come back in here and hit execute. Oops, why can't I hit execute? That was interesting. Did it, oh, that's interesting. Is it tied to that other thing? Because I deleted it? That can't be. It, it must create a copy of it, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Oh, I, would. I was just on the, I think I was on the wrong one. I, somehow, oh. somehow uh, that, okay, I get it. So, and I hit execute. Um, it will recreate it. Um, and this one, if we scroll this over the hill, you can see this is done with Fiddler. This one was done with Chrome. This one was done with Fiddler. Now let's say we wanted to replicate that API call in auto hotkey. What I used to do was to click here and start looking at the headers or just look at the raw even and go, okay, here's the, the endpoint, you know, the host and then, you know, the URL and endpoint and here's the uh, payload down here and transfer that to auto hotkey and one HTTP request, right? But this is where, let me let me launch my uh, Fiddler everywhere. So now my script's running. Now, if I click this, actually, I think I need to be on the raw, okay, and click this. See how it says converted to Fiddler? Now, if I come in here and let's do a new and paste. So that ripped that traffic out of Fiddler adapted it to auto hotkey code and put it into an API call, the WinHTTP request uh, with a com object. And I can replicate that now. So, and, and here are the headers. So Isaiah has put them into a, um, uh, an object up here to iterate over, which is perfectly fine. I, I prefer it the other way, but it doesn't matter. Um, so it'll be easy if you wanna disable some of the headers, right? We can comment some of these out. Um, this line here says if Fiddler's running and you want, if you wanna see your auto hotkey traffic, Make sure that you set this proxy here to whatever port you're listening to. It defaults to 8866, so um, that one's set for you. Um, and then anyway, it does the call, right? So it's uh, pretty slick. Um, I could save and run this, and we would see the traffic in Fiddler as well. But you, you get the idea, right? What I like to do is to use Fiddler, I'm sorry, use my browser to do my action. I look in Fiddler and go, oh, that's cool. Inside Fiddler, let me, let me, bring it out of that composer and try to recreate that. Hey, that worked. Okay, now let me adapt that to auto hotkey. And then let me start changing some of the key value pairs in the URL or whatever, or something in the payload to adjust, you know, what's getting sent and tweaked. Was there any, any questions on any of that? I know it's a lot. And we, we have a lot of videos are, you know, covering the general topic, um, but it's, it's a pretty cool uh, way to, to streamline what you're doing. Yeah. It looks nice. Cool. If uh, no one has any questions. You got everything like cookies and stuff working that way as well? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, so let's see the cookies were here and then in here. Yep, the cookies are there. Um, like I said, the payload, if there was a payload, it would be included as well. Um, at least, so, you know, as much as we've tested, we haven't used it a lot. Um, and then what I just realized right earlier this morning was Isaiah had done all this, but he didn't have the other things. He was just like with the output debug window, he was showing you the response text, but I wanted to make these handy. So these, you can come in and uncomment. Oops, sorry. I, I, I didn't want to make it um, custom to my settings, uh, but uh, so there's the, in, in addition to response text, right? There's the status, 
There's the get all response headers, or if you wanted a specific header, you can usually take this approach. And if there is that header, it, it'll, it'll should work. Um, and if you actually are returning like a JSON string, um, this will parse the JSON string, shove it into an object, um, and then actually the object of string will help you display what's in the object, but it converts the JSON into an auto hotkey object for you, which is really, to me, really wicked cool because I can parse JSON and look at it, but man, when stuff's in an auto hotkey object, it's so much easier for me. Um, and I put the references right here, which is IntelliSense doesn't help me there. So there's the object of string, you can download it, and there's the parse JSON, um, you can get both of those. And that's just when you go and run this the first time, it's all available. So that way everything is basically in here that you need, or at least linked to the stuff that you need. I put those in my library because I use them so much. Um, I like having them there. Cool. Okay, well, let me stop rambling. Um, and let's turn it over to you guys. So who's got something they're either working on? I think um, either Robert or Dwight, I, I assume. I don't remember last names. So I see too many emails and stuff, so I'm not sure if, if it's the right people or not. But um, let me stop sharing. Which one you got? If it's you guys, or does someone else have something they want to share? Yeah, Robert, API calls to me. They're they're my. If you, if I had one tool in my toolbox, it'd be a, understanding API calls because it uh it just it opens the door to so many things. It's crazy. Yeah, so well, you gotta, yeah, you just have to tell me you wanted to unmute. So, um, has to unmute. Ah, okay. Yeah, I I'm, understand the concepts on the API calls, but and it's really impressive what you've done uh, reformatting for the auto hotkey code. Uh, I, I just don't know right enough right now to, to really give you the proper uh, congratulations for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me show you one more. I just remembered it. So let me launch my API syntax writer. And here, like my auto hockey web scraping syntax writer, you can hold down control and click and say, oh, I, I want an example of the what is TP request. Oh, we can't see your screen. Oh, well, that would make it a little easier. Um, it, it actually didn't work. So hey, but you didn't know that. So so, so here's my GUI, right? So I hold down control and click this and I can choose like, let me see the template. There's my template. Um, the, if this was auto hotkey thing, it would, it would look a little more sense, but like virtually almost all like here, like setting headers. Oh, I need to set the accept header. And so I have examples, a lot of examples of different ways and often the links to go read more about it. Um, so I use this thing a lot, right? It's uh, it's it's very very helpful. This syntax writer um, for for getting headers, right? Here's oh, I need the content length. It's kind of like an example I showed earlier, right? So it it helps me write my auto hockey syntax, especially around API calls. So that's on my website. I'll I'll try to remember to put the link um, some somewhere. I'll go find it here while someone while someone's sharing their stuff. Hey, I'll I'll share my problem if uh, oh. if you're ready. Yeah, we'll see it. Me uh, share that screen and okay. So the first part I suspect is going to be pretty simple. Uh, this is the Snagit graphics editor from TechSmith. Uh, it's a screen capture program and they've got this editor that you can do some very limited Photoshop kind of stuff with the things that you capture from the screen. Uh, there's other products out there. I know different people like different products. And so I like this one myself. Um, I also like their Camtasia product, uh, but I'm not really here to advertise for them. Uh, I'm actually here to complain about something I don't like about the way their product works. And I was thinking that we could use auto hotkey to resolve that, uh, but I'm stuck. So when you capture an image and I chose an appropriate image here to capture, uh, you can see it's showing here at hundred percent in the zoom. And, uh, let's say that I wanted to resize this image to 80% because I wanted to shrink this up a little bit and uh, put it before I put it on my website, right? And so now, now it's at 100%, but you see it's smaller. So if I undo, it goes back to the original size. 
So my problem is when I click image, resize image here, notice there's no accelerator key in their menu. So I don't have any way to, uh, you know, send a key to activate this particular feature. And then worse than that, when I come down here, if I hit the tab key, nothing happens because these fields, this little pop-up window doesn't currently have focus. So I can't, I have to take my mouse and click down here to put focus on that field. Then I can type 80 and, you know, et cetera. So I thought it would be fairly simple to send the command to the menu to pop that dialog at least. Uh, but I'm stuck on that, I'm ashamed to say. Uh, but then beyond that, I really don't know what the best way to set focus on this field would be. I know you can click the mouse. I know there's some technology out there where you can screenshot the screen, do some OCR and, you know, et cetera. And so I just thought that uh, it would help me to know the answer to this and it might help some other people as well to talk through the different options for how to set focus on a control that you can't easily get to otherwise. Yeah, and, and the big thing, which which I was going to reply to your email earlier, is that it's going to differ for every program you're using, right? Mm -hmm. So there is no, this is the way. There's, let's start here, let's try this, then we'll try that, then we'll try the other. Like, there's no one way. It just depends on the program you're connecting to. And had I really looked at the menus, I see now, because before I had I had mentioned to, to Robert, like, hey, there's a, have you tried using the, 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 um, I forget what it's called, the, the, the menu command, right? Built in not a hotkey. When, 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 you, when, you select, when, when you select. Yeah, but looking right, just looking at those, I can see like, yeah, see how actually in sight, see how those look, your file edit search compared to on the Snagit tool, mm -hmm. right? Like that's the, the site is how they have to look kind of like that. The other ones, well, I'd still say it's worth the try, but it doesn't surprise me if those didn't work. Oh, I see. So that, so there's, something weird about the way they set up their menus. I noticed that their menus are actually kind of in the title bar of the window, yeah. which They're is not unusual. the old fashioned style menu things, right? They're a different type of control or Jackie, yeah. do you want to elaborate on that? I mean, the no, I would say it looks, um, as you said, I, I'll let uh, Matthew um, chime in here. Yeah, just a quick comment, and this is probably a, a rookie approach, but this is what I've been doing on my, uh, I use a lot of Autodesk uh, programs and um, AutoCAD, Revit, Navisworks, and also, uh, of course, Microsoft Office. So one thing that those programs and Snagit have in common is the ability to just simply hit the F10 or the Alt key. And then go into like say if you hit F if you hit uh, here I'm on, I'm on my snag it on my end just to, just so I can articulate so if I hit Alt I and that takes me to the image and then I hit I again it opens up resize image so you could write a quick hot key or a quick macro to get that far gotcha okay and how did you know that the the well that's funny because look at, let me let me make a point here, Matthew. So I didn't realize, so when I click this and I hover on resize image, notice there's no underline there, right? Uh, you said I could hit alt I and then I again, but notice there's not an underline under the word image. But as you suggested, if I hit alt oh. I, then now there's an, I, there's an underline under image. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that strange? Uh, yeah. It's because the alt actually activates the menu shortcuts. So, so you can see that in many cases. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty universal approach for almost all uh, of, uh, Microsoft programs. Not all, but most. So lesson learned is make sure you actually mimic, you know, what you're going to be doing, <laughs> right? Well, when did that, yeah, when did that start? Because uh, I remember, but you're, I mean, I'm looking here at just the editor and I don't see any underlines under these either. Have you used alt so, to activate those menus? Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I did not. And so, uh, so I go alt. Yeah, so you see alt, it right when you hit As that. I'm tapping the alt key there, it's turning on the underscores. Yeah. This is something that's existed almost as long as Windows has existed. Well, that's awfully weird that I wouldn't know that. 
<laughs> well, I, you know what I think, Robert? I think the point is, because because honestly, it, it never crossed my mind, was because I'm, I'm used to seeing them, but I didn't realize I'm using the alt key when I'm doing it, right? That's why right. for me, I'm used to seeing them is that it is there, but I didn't realize if I'm using the mouse that they're not there. I think it's a, it's a good point. You know, it's not a... I'm, all, I'm one of those weird people that memorize a million keyboard shortcuts. And so it's really bizarre to me that I wasn't aware that this shows or doesn't show that is okay well i just i figured i would I told you in the beginning i would probably be embarrassed by uh the answer to this <laughs> well you know, i'm glad I, I, I didn't expect that like to be I, the answer though <laughs> like i said uh, I, I kind of thought it might be a rookie approach so i'm glad that uh, i was able to help somebody um well yeah, yeah that's so, my universal my that's my first approach to almost every microsoft platform that I want to try to create shortcuts for me um, too, frankly but I wanted to try to do it the quote right way uh hence I dove into using the win menu select item uh for the first time I was also I've also for the first time used the if when active here to limit my keys to only the snagit editor so that I, I was proud of that uh and it actually works if I uh, go here and hit alt shift r then I get the message box telling me I'm going to resize, uh, but then it doesn't actually pop the resize menu. So I get I get this, but I don't get this. So your answer is that that particular auto hotkey command just doesn't work with the way Snagit or the way TechSmith implemented the menu for the Snagit application, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, and then the menu, point the, well taken. The the win menu select is for older uh, Windows programs, and Snagit isn't an older Windows program. I would say on Windows 10, I don't even expect it to work on Notepad, which would have been really. Uh, yeah, I, I, I okay. haven't tested it, but I wouldn't put my head on the block and say that it most certainly works because okay. the win menu select command is probably a bit dated it, and have, it, i'm not going to disagree with jackie all i'm going to say is having said that if you're dealing with an older program it is an excellent way to get to what you want if it works right it's very fast very accurate reliable as soon as it's a uh, standard windows menu absolutely it works one yeah. okay well I, i've used the meth the method matthew suggested for many years with auto hotkey and just this is the first time the <laughs> but the we still haven't solved the whole out. thing, right? Or did it did it jump into where you wanted to be right after? Is that what it, it did? did? Yeah. So if I alt I and alt I again, or I'm sorry, not alt I again, I again, it does open that little window. So now right. my or I mean it? that's a window. It's some kind of control. But so are you focused? the question is, how do you click that now? Can you mouse over because the window? Can you mouse over it? So we I would think it tab. the windows. No, tab didn't work. Uh, no. So yeah, tab, I'm tabbing and nothing works. That's that's where I started. You know, when I mouse over Jackie, I don't see the window spy. It just continues to say uh, Windows 9 editor here. Yeah, yeah. that's not uh, the only information in the window. So, so please try again. Right. But shouldn't you be getting into it using the alt you know, using the keyboards, not the mouse. I think that was part of the, the whole point of the uh, first thing. Make sure we stick to the way you're going to automate it. So as soon as I'm hitting, I'm hitting alt here and I don't see anything happening right, in that little window. Right, but, but how did you get that window up there? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying that maybe I ought to use it from the beginning. So alt right. I, I, right now alt, alt, alt. Well, I was just, I thought a tab might might switch to it if it was yeah tap I would, <laughs> that i would have solved months ago if, it, oh, but, if that would work <laughs> right, my point is when it gets activated in that way it might be different that's all oh i see what you're saying yeah that makes sense and so jackie as i hover over this i do see the mouse position changing but nothing else changes and if i click on the width i thought maybe this focused control here would give me something but if i click on the width uh I see that, but I'm not really sure. And of course, it's gone now. And what happened there? Yeah. You know? yeah. If I click there, then I do see 
the focused control, but I don't really know what to do with that. That's a good question. It's a .NET program, so I'm not sure you can use the class in that in that. Yeah, way. it looks dynamic, even possibly. Yeah, yeah, that would be the hard part of it, yeah. actually. But the ACC library could probably activate it and get to it. Most likely, yeah. So I thought, okay, this mouse click, I kind of wanted to, I would like a solution for myself here, but I also would kind of like to talk through the different possible options. As you said earlier, Joe, it's not always going to be one answer uh, is the best answer. And so I kind of wanted to talk through the possible options for how to solve this kind of problem and talk about the pros and cons of those uh, so that other people could on their own figure out which one makes sense for a given scenario. See, now for me, not, not, it, it, it also has to do with if you're going to be using this just on your computer, it's just for you, and, and you're not looking for something that's incredibly robust, I would just probably use my automate my task, you know, function, because it'll be like an image thing and look for that width and then move over to the right or the 100% is probably always going to be consistent, but you could very quickly find that and click in there with without a problem, right, with that tool, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. But there, again, there's that ACC library or the UI automation approach um, that we could use. Uh, Dwight asked about using the mouse click, and I, I that's a good question. Uh, the problem is, depending on the size of this window, uh, that menu pops in different locations in relation to the left edge and the top. And so I don't think that a mouse click would work unless I'm mistaken, if anybody disagrees. No, that's why I was saying that the automate my task, you know, we'll find it, it'll do an image search, find that location, and then give it the location no matter where it is to, to click. Okay, I remember seeing the automate my task uh, presentation sometime back, or a presentation, uh, but I don't have it, and I don't remember the details on it. Is that a, a product you purchase, or no. is that a... Yeah, it's $1,000, you can buy it from me. <laughs> No, it's just on my website. Yeah. No, and, and even then, I don't think, let's not go that route, right? That's the that's the cheap seats way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I'd say this, I don't know, Jackie, do you have a different, you know, anyone else have a different idea other than the ACC library? What would be our next, you know, way to, to click that thing, to, to, to get in that enter box, the, the width box, I guess? You could use one of the different methods of getting all of the controls on the window, but as the Windows Spy ain't getting any uh, great ones, uh, you could still study the structure of how the controls come when you click one or the other, stuff like that. As you do have more normal controls there, um, I, I'd say you could probably find a way to get there using uh, auto hotkeys normal control commands. But again, I'd say the image one would be the fastest one in this case, but if you want to do something that's truly reliable on different computers, if you're using it both at home or at work and different computers mm -hmm. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. the ACC library would also be my next guess as to get more information on, on each control just to see if they actually do have a better naming scheme or uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they have a label you could use, but yeah. Is it, um, is it a... The viewer, I, I dragged, I put it in his chat so he can, he can try to run it. Hopefully. Yeah, uh, it's hopefully also, it it's, but it, it has a, um, you know, a nice GUI. This is the ACC viewer, right? This is a tool kind of like Windows Spy or the IWB2 Learner tool in the sense that you can drag the stuff and kind of see what you're doing, right? It's a very quick, easy way to see if it's a solution that could work. Oh, good. So what do I do? You we'll bring back up open the window you want to access. Okay. And then you drag this crosshair to <laughs> okay, so as soon as I click, it uh, goes away. Okay, so it's like on a tool step, kind of. Yeah, there's there's no good way of getting around that then. Um, yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I click, that other one drops. 
yeah i i have other tools i i yeah i have a tool that i that it'll be like a mouse over um i don't know if i let me see if i can find it where i can give it to you where it'll run it's from microsoft um Mm -hmm. let me let me let me see if i can find where where i have it stored so while he looks jackie could you talk a little bit about the acc library i'm not familiar with that one acc library is the it's one of microsoft's attempts at making uh, things accessible so if you had like a screen reader for someone who was uh, blind or had bad vision or oh. something like that it exposes more information about the controls so you have more ways of telling if it was some kind of uh, vision impaired person uh, more about every control visible. So that's the general idea of the uh, ACC um, code as a whole. And a few people in the community has tried to utilize that for uh, automation. And it can work really well because there is almost no controls um, on Windows that the ACC library can get some information about. You could still, if it was, let's say, a Delphi program that's only showing you a rendered interface, like a game, then you can't get any, any information because there are no exposed controls. But as soon as it's something like this, where you actually have exposed controls, the ACC library can help you in many cases, but it is, uh, it's less used and it has never been worked on as much as many of the other ways of doing stuff. So the issue with that is that even though you might find more information, it's not, easier to automate that way always okay and also the the acc um the microsoft accessibility approach is the old way the the ui automation user interface i think automation from microsoft is one that supersedes it right it's the newer thing but even take take everything that jackie just said and and it's actually like just extreme even more. It's even harder to work with because there's not as many posts about it, but it can really peek inside like every, all the newer tools. It's really amazing what you can do with it. Um, unfortunately, we don't have great libraries right now for, and Isaiah, we, you know, who works for me, we've been trying to get him to develop a library that we could use, but um, we've had other priorities, so we haven't worked on it. So I understood. So on the left, the drop down, the MSAA. So that's, um, if you click it, you'll see, that's what's kind of cool about this tool. There's the MSAA, and then there's the um, UI automation. So those are the two we're discussing, right? The MSAA is the the older one, which is actually uh, deprecated, but it's still like in so many programs, it doesn't matter, right? So over on the right, leave it on MSAA, please. Because that's a tool that we can actually, pro- if we can find it, then we can program and say, click that button, right? Um, now, over on the right, those three yellow boxes, one of those will basically be like a hover thing wherever your mouse is. Um, and I would say just start, click click one and go back and look at the other, you know, look at another program and we'll see if it just updates without you actually doing anything. And you can go ahead and click somewhere too, just see if it, there we go. So see how that's um, in it. Well, no, as I'm. Mo- oh, yeah, but you're going to be in the menu. So okay. yeah, now- it. so it's updating, right? Okay. So. All right. So if I, let's see, so if I click on that and then alt I, I to get it to open. And then if I come down here, ha, there you go. Yeah. So. So the good news is, is with the MSA library, we can activate it. Now, the problem is we really need that other library tool, the ACC viewer, to be able to get the path to that box. At least I do. Let's put it that way. 
Now, maybe Jackie or Isaiah or someone could could look at the stuff on the right over in the in the inspect tool and convert it, but it is a technology that we could use, utilize, right? That's at least what this says. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot here. The, the ACC library, if you want to actually, if you still have that open, um, just so everyone, and we have a whole webinar where we talk through examples of using it, right? There were actually two, um, but that one, so drag that to one that doesn't disappear. Just drag that to the, the ACC one. Yeah, that one, drag that to something, onto something, it doesn't really matter what. And then let go okay. once you- I drag it to the inspect there. Yeah, so see, well, See how the bot at the very bottom of that the path says two, right? That's that's no at the very bottom. Oh, yeah. two numeral two, gotcha. So that would be how you access. That's the path to that thing, right? Um, and and you would tie it to like the uh, the the exe or to the class or something. But that would be how we could program it. Now drag it to something else that's more than two because you'll see like the menus often if you drag it to those. No, no, yeah. I forget what. <laughs> How about well, dragging think, it to something in Snagit? So we're right. like, you know, Snagit information. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So see that one's path three point four. I don't know if you noticed an update. And um, I did. Sorry. That's right. It doesn't matter. But just you're getting the idea, right? That's how when you let go. Oh, it doesn't do it till you let go. Sorry. Well, I don't. I don't. I mean, I didn't. I. I don't remember. I don't yeah. use it. I'm not in there that often. There we go. 15 there. For and now you can say, thing. see at the top right, show ACC structure. So this is also a way you can start navigating around. Did that display somewhere? It did right here, yeah. We, we can't see it. Really? There it is. Huh. Okay, yeah, we couldn't see that. So, huh. so now you can start seeing all the different things that instead of going and clicking to, and actually we could navigate to it this way, Jackie, um, potentially. Um, Maybe. No, because the second you click it, it's going to go away. So never mind. Yeah. But what I've done is I've just played with this and said, well, let me try 15.1, 15.2, 15.3, and see, you know, see what they do. Huh. Yeah. And again, the cool thing about the ACC thing is there's, you know, we could find a, an example where we can say, hey, go do that default action, go click, or it'll actually return the coordinates too. So see on the, uh, the see where it says roles, text, and then there's uh, location, X99, Y80, W28, height 12, right? Like that, even if we can't programmatically click the thing, we can get the coordinates really reliably, right? So we're not doing, we're not doing image detection and getting the location this is programmatically getting that location right so it can be very fast and very reliable okay but it's well would that be updated depending on the size the current size of the window and absolutely huh well that's cool so the general idea of using something as complex as this is of course to negate any types of um, changes that would happen to screen size or font or um, aspect ratio or whatever it might be. All kinds of different issues that you have if you use images. Whereas if you actually use something as, as the ACC library, you negate all of those issues, but you also have a much harder setup process so those are the differences. So if you're only making it for yourself, so you fully control how it looks, how, what the size on the screen is, sure, use stuff like fine text because it works and it's fast and it's easy to make the first setup. Could you talk about but, fine text? Matthew suggested that too. Could you talk about, I, I'm not familiar with the fine text. It's the it's the thing that Joe suggested earlier. Uh, nope. He made it a more easy to use GUI for it. And well, so so in a way, those two are interlinked. It okay. is simply a method of using image search, um, 
it was a, a guy, I think he was Chinese, who made a few changes to how that worked. And he made a few good functions that made it easy to store um, the image resource in your file. So you don't need to store different images on your hard disk or hard drive. But other than that, it's, it's in essence, it's um, image search. Yeah, okay. The difference though is the um, find, find text is with everything Jackie said. Um, automate my task, it, it isn't just that because if you're looking at something and there's a control that auto hockey can easily see, it'll use the controls instead of the image, right? And that's where it's like, hey, you know what? Automate my task, it's a pretty slick tool because hey, if that happens to be a control we can easily detect, it uses that and it's it's very reliable and very fast. Uh, but if it can't, if there's no control, that, so it's basically a wrapper around fine text that just makes it no, no, it's it's completely rewritten. Yeah, okay. it's, but the concept still, it's just if it doesn't have that, then it uses the um, an image. Okay, and uh, Cool Beans asked if you would unmute him. I don't. I'm not going to take a shot at his first name. <laughs> oh, Chunji, sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> you should be good. Well, I was going to try to help explain fine text, but I think you guys covered it. It's kind of just uh alternative image search so the problem would be that you know it works on your computer but it doesn't work anywhere else and gotcha. and the other thing that that uh, i want to say annoyed me i'm not knocking it it's a it's a cool i loved it when i first found it but it finds the thing and will return the location and it will return the location of multiple finds right but there's no way to interact with whatever you find Right. So that was the first thing for me. I wrote some hotkeys to say, hey, if I find it now, click it or send text to it. And so I made that adaption. But then with Mace I said, you know, I like this concept, but what if I want to do more? Right. What if I want to do some other stuff? And so we jazzed it up a lot more where we can send text to things, double click. You can right click or left click or, you know, double click, wait for windows to appear. So there's a lot more stuff built into automate my task compared to find text. Now, and find text is super fast. Um, it's, I know from talking to Jackie when he was looking at it, there's not great documentation on some, and neither, we don't have it on ours either, like what the settings actually do when you're adjusting some of the like color, you know, settings and this and that. Um, they do help, but there's no real explanation of what you're really doing when you're adjusting those things. Yeah, uh, that is one problem where you, the documentation is like 40 pages and hopefully you find the right page of the forum post. <laughs> Okay, well, so then to summarize, it sounds like automate my task is the uh, simple path to solving this problem for myself. It won't be the most uh, tight, optimized solution possible for this, but it would solve my problem. So I'll go dig, do some digging on that. I don't want to beat the horse here uh, on this issue, but I thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts and ideas on this. It, I I'm, I'm feel a little bit vindicated that it's actually is this hard because I was really stuck on it, but it, that salves my wounds of over that alt key thing just a little. <laughs> well, and, and the first thing I would do is I'd go look at that, you know, I put together a video with a document that has like 17 different ways to automate programs, right? Okay. And the ones that just pop to the top of our heads are, are probably really good ones, but there might be some other ones that we didn't think about right away that like, Oh, you know what? Yeah, we might, we might try that. Um, there are other approaches. There's a lot of different ways to do stuff with auto hockey. Okay. I'll check that out in your auto automate my task. Uh, I'm sure you, I know you have videos on that as well. So. Well, you know, and, and I forget, was it Matthew? I think was the one that suggested the other thing I would be doing is I would, I would automate sending whatever it was, the alt I, I, or however you got to that. And then try sending different keys just to see, you know what, there might be something that will jump. It, I think it's worth five minutes of your time just to try hitting yeah. different keys because you just never know, right? I mean. When when you actually hit um, alt I, I, 
does the window have any kind of, of focus input focus anywhere is there some uh, reliable way to not that i can tell i'm holding i holding down i'm holding down the shift key and hitting arrows here to see if it highlights text and it doesn't I hit the tab the... And it doesn't move me between between controls uh i can type some i'm typing numbers and nothing's happening Doesn't seem like the window has any type of input focus at all. That's right. It almost looks like they used a tooltip as a container and put a bunch of controls in it, which is maybe a slick UI implementation, but it doesn't, it's not very helpful for, for what we're trying to do here. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't even seem as if it had its own window ID. So it's, it's, it's truly an owned control by by Snagit itself. Now, now here, here's so here's another question that you know I don't think we want to try to try to actually solve it with this approach right now. But couldn't we also look for some sort of like a send or post message to the Windows on what's happening? You might be able to, but I'd still say that you probably had a better chance of going with the class and the the HWND wrapper. If you could figure out if it's actually dynamic or if it's um, set in stone when you open and close the window or right. whatever it might be, or you could go for the class of NM, which uh, it seemed to have at least uh, a numbered uh, control. So you might be able to figure out exactly which control number you were looking at here. And as you can say, see, they have uh, automation IDs, mm -hmm. which you could probably also find a way to use. And the class name is text box. So you could probably make a list of all the text box controls that were available in the window and traverse those. Stuff like that. The, the possibilities are many. Right. And it really looks like that's the only thing that's changing as I move between these guys. That, and of course, the mouse position. Hmm. Did you try okay. hitting the letter P? Uh, P? Well, uh, if, click on something else first, then hit P. D. Okay. If I click in here and hit P, P, yeah. it does that for me. Tab key, huh, that's funny. Tab key doesn't even switch between controls here. It just cycles through the elements of the drop down box, which is not standard stuff. To my knowledge, I'm not going to make any claims now. <laughs> Tab key here, though, does move me between the two. So once I get the focus in there, I can tab around. The problem is getting focus on this little window to begin with. So anyway, again, I don't want to take up all the time. Thank you again so much, everyone, for your ideas and suggestions. I have learned some things, whether we solve this problem or not. Awesome. All right. Just because it's a good time point, I'm going to stop recording and then start recording again. Okay. How do I unshare here? <laughs>